Um, unfortunately, GDAL is a lot larger than Git. It doesn't go quite as simply as that. Um, I'm also going to focus a bit more on Python bindings for GDAL. Um, and you'll be able to just see a little bit of a comparison in terms of complexity of some simple commands. Um, and then I'll have a bunch of links to different documentation. So um, to start, I'll talk a little bit about what GDAL is, um, some of the basic functionality that it offers, just some of the basic commands, um, a little bit about how to install it, either for the command line or Python, um, a little bit about basic use, and then some other resources and tutorials that already exist that I can recommend. So, um, just a very, very brief history. GDAL has existed from since about 2000, but it was starting to be developed already in 1998. In about 2006, the open source Geospatial Foundation took it over as one of their own projects and has been developing it ever since. Um, it was previously more separate from what is known as the OGR Simple Features Library, which we'll talk about later, but they've been much more tightly coupled over the last few years, so you can talk about GDAL, and when you speak about GDAL, you're often speaking about both OGR and GDAL. Um, I'm mostly just going to be focusing on the raster uh, functionality, and Nico afterwards will talk a bit more about the vector functionality. Currently, we're at version 2.3.2 um, as of September 2018 just to give an idea if you're looking at different versions to install. Uh, GDAL itself uh, has a permissive free software license, the MIT license that you see fairly frequently with different types of open source software. Um, it's written in C and C++, but there are bindings for Python, Ruby, Java, R, Perl, C Sharp, and a couple other languages as well. Um, and it's cross-platform, which is really useful. Um, not just Mac, Linux, Windows, but also Android and iOS. The intended purpose of GDAL is basically just to read and write raster and or vector geospatial formats. Um, there's more than 200 supported geospatial data formats, um, and it essentially presents a single abstract data model for both raster or vector, respectively, so two different data models. Um, it also provides different command line utilities, which I'll cover briefly, like I said, um, mostly for translation and a little bit of geospatial processing. But a lot of that processing is enhanced when you incorporate other languages with other libraries to process and uh, modify the data in different ways. It's most definitely not a geographic information system. Um, so what does a raster data set in GDAL look like? You basically have your data set in whatever format. Um, you create a GDAL dataset object, and within that you have different objects that are each of the raster bands, and each of those have different properties. Um, but the data itself, data set itself also has properties, such as the size of the raster, the geo-referencing transformation, projection information, coordinate system, different types of additional metadata that you can access and modify. Um, and like I said, also for each of the bands. Um, so that's the basis for all the analysis, and you'll see this um, mostly come up in the Python bindings rather than the command line utilities. Just some of the raster data formats that are supported. Um, there are many, but GeoPackage is really interesting. GeoTIFF, of course. And then there's also this GDAL virtual raster um, that you can use. It's basically an XML file that links to the files that you have located somewhere else, and you can use the virtual rasters to modify and conduct analysis without actually modifying the original files. So that's pretty cool. I won't be talking about that, but something to look into that I would recommend. Um, also, geospatial PDFs, which are a headache, and I hate them, but you can deal with them with them pretty easily using GDAL um, if you ever run into one. Um, one command line command, to get the list of all of the formats is just GDAL translate formats. And GDAL translate is one of the GDAL utilities that I'll talk about more in a minute. So some of the software that utilizes GDAL, there's a lot of open source software that does. Uh, QGIS, CardoDB, GeoKettle, Orfeo Toolbox, SagaGIS, uh, Graskis, PostGIS. Um, there are tons of software that use GDAL to deal with all the geospatial data that they handle and work with. So what does the functionality actually look like of GDAL? 
So here are just some of the utilities. There's like three to four times more than this. Um, it's a little bit small, but GDAL info just reports the metadata of the data set that you're accessing. GDAL translate is mostly used to convert between different formats, but also to create copies. GDAL warp deals mostly with the projections and coordinate systems. So um, you can do that to change those, but also shift data um, and modify the coordinates in, in different ways. Um, there's another utility dealing specifically with DEMs. Um, GDAL merge you can use to mosaic different images, which I use in a lot of different um, larger processing with lots of satellite imagery, for example. Um, GDAL rasterize is, uh, and polygonize link sort of the two different data models to translate between vectors and rasters. Um, you can also pan sharpen using, using GDAL. Um, and one thing that I also find very interesting is you can compare two, Im two images and report on the differences between them, um, which has uh, output that you need to look at the documentation for more closely. Um, just an example, this is just um, a tool in QGIS, um, not so important, but it's just for reprojecting a data set. And what you'll see down here um, in a lot of the different tools in QGIS is what is basically the GDAL command line utility uh, command. Um, in this case, it's GDAL warp because you're reprojecting. Um, if you're interested in learning more about some of the command line utilities and what the input and output look at and don't want to deal with all the documentation at first, just for simple basics, a lot of these tools will give you just sort of a, a bit of an insight with the user interface where you can play with some of the variables and look at what happens. Um, yeah. Can I ask something? Um, is this just a regular uh, QGIS tool or is it a specific? It's just, a, it's just a regular QGIS okay. tool. So this is just the regular reproject transform tool. Uh -huh. um, and if you look, most of them will usually have okay. the command cool. right there. A lot of people skip over it to like, oh, it's just a bunch of text and they'll hit OK, uh -huh. start the process. But it's usually, for a lot of the standard tools, it's included in the window. Um, and so the command that was there was GDAL warp. And, um, one of the commands is then to overwrite the file that you already have with a new uh, coordinate system, in this case um, WGS84, um, to then relist all of the no data values as zero. The output file format is GeoTIFF, and you have an input data set. In this case, it was JPEG, and then whatever you want to name your output data set. You just have to be a bit careful with the endings for how you're naming your output data. If it doesn't quite fit with the output driver, it won't necessarily not function, but it might not open. So just be aware of that. Uh, installation. GDAL itself is installed if you have QGIS. It's located somewhere. But if you want to explicitly install it for Mac, you can do that using Homebrew. Or um, King Chaos has a couple different binary distributions that you can access and install. Um, Linux, it's usually available through a lot of the standard repositories that are available. And for Windows, um, I, there are a couple different distributions that exist, but I most definitely would recommend OSGO for Windows. Um, it simplifies some of the difficulties that Windows tends to throw at you. Um, for Python bindings, because I'm going to be talking a bit more about the Python bindings, I'd definitely recommend using Conda, regardless of what uh, operating system you're using and what Conda is. I won't go into it now, but it basically is a virtual environment package and dependency manager for Python. Um, here's how to install it. You can come back and look at the slides later if you're interested with a bit of a tutorial. So basic use of GDAL. Um, I did this in a Jupyter notebook. Um, and here's a command that just allows me to show the different output images within the Jupyter notebook itself. Um, the packages that I'm using are very simple. There's two standard pa Python packages for operating system stuff, which I almost mostly need to deal with paths. Um, NumPy for dealing with arrays, which is the advantage to working in Python than just using GDAL. Um, matplotlib for showing the plots, and just GDAL for accessing formats and transforming things. So one of the first things you might want to do is to check the versions of the things that you're working on. This is general. Um, you can check whatever version of Python that you're using with this command and whatever version of GDAL that the version of Python you're doing is accessing with this command. In this case, it's 2.3.2. You can also find out where it's located here. Um, and this just allows GDAL to also throw exceptions in Python, which is 
not so important. You can do these, ex get the same information from the command line by just, if you have Python installed, getting the version this way, um, and also using GDAL info, and this returns the version of GDAL that you have installed. If you want to get information about a data set, um, you'll use what's called the GDAL info utility, which I already talked about. Um, in the examples I'll be showing, uh, I just use a Landsat 8 band, just a random band, um, and I'll also show a little bit of something with Sentinel-2 information. So this is the output that you get from a GDAL info command. Um, let's see if this works. Yeah, so it mostly just gives the driver that it is, the file type, where it's located, the um, coordinate information, um, and exactly where the upper left, lower left, the corners of the image are located, and coordinates in the projection that it, it's in, but also lat and long. Um, and this is done just with uh, the GDAL info command in Python. And you can set the options for that command using a different object. The command line is a lot easier. It's just GDAL info and the path to the file. In this case, I also forced the recalculation of statistics, so the maximum and minimum in the different bands. But that does the same thing as the other code in Python. If you want to open and close a data set in Python, that's not something you need to do from the command line. But you basically just open it. This is a link to the, the Landsat 8, pan, uh, Landsat 8 band. Um, and to close it, you just basically you can delete it or set it to none. So there isn't a function for that. You can also access the metadata from a data set that's open with a couple different commands. This returns the number of rasters that are within the data set object. Um, you can get a, some other information, um, what the no data value is. In this case, there's none. Um, what's the band data type, unsigned integer 16. Um, and overall statistics of the maximum and minimum of that band. Um, and you can get that a different way as well, get maximum, get minimum. Um, to create copies, this looks a bit different in Python versus GDAL. Um, first, I'm just showing a directory. It's a random directory, um, a path that I defined before. It's empty at the moment, just to show um, that I open the band that I have. I set the driver to whatever uh, format I want. In this case, it's a virtual raster, um, end and envy data type. Um, I then, in Python, use that driver to create a copy. Um, and this is just where it's located. And after that, it happens very quickly. You have the data sets then in the same directory. Um, this looks also very different from the command line. You don't need to deal with uh, opening and copying. You basically just use translate, the kind of file type that you want, and the input and output data type. It's very short and easy. Um, I'm going to go a little bit through this because it's not so important. Um, the code is available on the slides. I'll show you the link to that later so you can look at these a bit later. Um, but so if you want to crop an image, for example, um, you open it, which creates a GDAL dataset object. Um, you can define what those coordinates look like in different ways for the area within it that you want. Um, and in Python, you use translate to crop an image. So you use it for copying, but you also use it for cropping. And you can define the project, the projection window that you're going to crop to. And you can do it that way. And from the command line, it's basically the same thing. GDAL translate, to go back, translate here. Um, and the projection window, which even has the same name in the same order, the coordinates, um, the input data, and the output data. So it's pretty simple. Um, and I'll skip over this, but there's a longer example that goes into a bit more specifically um, of what makes the Python implementation a bit more complicated than the command line to do different things. Um, in this case, I created a false color image um, using GDAL and Python together. And you'll see in all of this code here, um, you're accessing GDAL data, um, data sets and the data bands in different ways and in iterative ways that uh, um, utilize the GDAL data model very explicitly. So there's that. If you're interested in further tutorials, 
that are GDAL related. Here's a longer list of a bunch of different things. Uh, this cheat sheet in particular is very useful for command line uh, commands. Um, I'd also highly recommend uh, this one. These are four different short introductions to looking at GDAL in different ways from map projections to copying to just converting formats. Um, there are other Python image libraries, so Rasterio, I'd really recommend if you actually want to work with Python using GDAL. It simplifies a lot of the dealing with the GDAL data model, so data sets and raster um, layers, so to say, um, and makes it much, much simpler, so you don't have to open and close and delete and make sure that everything is happening um, explicitly. Rasterio takes care of most of that for you. And um, There's a couple different image libraries that I'd recommend in Python. Uh, here are some additional sources that I used, mostly documentation, and that's it. Well, thanks for your attention. <laughs>